This movie was created to help you locate and download the resources that are on your Type 1 Diabetes Caring with Confidence DVD. First, you must insert your DVD into a computer. Please make sure that you have Adobe Acrobat Reader loaded on your computer to open some of the files. When you first put your DVD into a computer, the computer will do one of two things. The computer will start to automatically play the DVD in your primary DVD software, like Windows Media Player or a VLC player. Close this software down right away. Another thing that might happen is that this action window might pop up. This window is asking you what you would like to do with the DVD you put into the drive of your computer. From this window, you can play the DVD in your favorite software. But for now, we want to scroll down to the Open Folder to view files using Windows Explorer. Select it and hit OK. Here are the documents located on your DVD. You can now drag and drop them onto your desktop or put them in another folder for future use. Let's say you are already watching your DVD on a computer and the action window is gone and you don't know how to get back to see the resources. First, double click on my computer. Find the Type 1 Diabetes Caring with Confidence DVD. Right click it and come down to Explore. A window will open up showing you all the resources available on your Type 1 Diabetes Caring with Confidence DVD. This video is intended for general diabetes education purposes. Only a healthcare provider can give individualized medical advice. This video presents images of medical devices, tools, medications, and products as examples only. The video in no way recommends or endorses specific products. Whoa, you all right? <laughs> Wait, get some help. Jim, something's wrong with Will, okay? Will, Will, what's wrong? I don't, I don't feel good. What do you mean you don't feel good? What's wrong? I, I think I'm low. Low what? What do you mean low? Talk to me. The young man in this opening scenario has type 1 diabetes and was experiencing a low blood sugar reaction. If you were in this situation, would you know what to do? Would you know how to help someone experiencing a low blood sugar episode? If you care for or about someone with type 1 diabetes, you may feel overwhelmed. Be assured people with diabetes can live a normal healthy life with some adjustments in their daily routine. This video will help you understand some of the basics of diabetes, such as how food, activity, and insulin and or oral medications affect blood sugar levels, how insulin is given, how blood sugar testing is done, how to recognize signs and symptoms of low or high blood sugar, and how to assist a person having a low blood sugar reaction. This video, however, does not replace individual medical advice or recommendations from the healthcare team. Diabetes is a common medical condition affecting both children and adults. It is estimated that one in three people born in the year 2000 will develop diabetes. This video will discuss information more specific to type 1 diabetes. Each person with diabetes has an individual plan of care. When young people with diabetes participate in organized activities, they usually have a written diabetes plan. This plan is called a Diabetes Medical Management Plan. The plan will include how they manage their diabetes with food, activity, and insulin, and or oral medications their usual symptoms and treatments for high and low blood sugars, and contact information in case of an emergency. Examples of diabetes medical management plans are available through the Wisconsin Diabetes Prevention and Control Program and the American Diabetes Association. If you are caring for someone with type 1 diabetes, discuss details of the diabetes management plan with a parent or guardian. To begin the program, you will learn more about diabetes and how it affects the body. Let's listen to Dr. Todd Varnas, pediatric endocrinologist from Madison, Wisconsin. Diabetes is actually an umbrella term uh, that includes several different diseases, 
what links these diseases together is that they all can cause an elevated blood sugar, which we sometimes call hyperglycemia. The best way to really understand diabetes is to first think about how somebody without diabetes can convert food into energy. So for example, I do not have diabetes. When I eat food, there's always a certain amount of food that has a uh, type of sugar or carbohydrate. And when I absorb that food into my intestine, those carbohydrates are all converted into a, a form of sugar called glucose. And that glucose is absorbed into the bloodstream. And that causes the blood glucose level to go up. Sometimes we say blood glucose level and sometimes we say blood sugar level, and those mean the same thing. So food is taken into the intestine, oftentimes converted into glucose, absorbed into the bloodstream, and the blood glucose level goes up in the blood. The way the pancreas responds to that is it releases a hormone called insulin. And insulin also goes into the bloodstream and goes throughout the body. The job of insulin is to help our bodies process this glucose or this energy source. And so insulin goes to the actual cells of the body. And the best way to think about insulin's action is to think about insulin as opening the door to the cells. Insulin opens the door to the cells and allows the glucose that's in the bloodstream to move into the cells. So in summary, what insulin really does is it's a hormone that allows our bodies to convert the food that we eat into energy that our body can use. And insulin allows that blood sugar level that goes up with eating to come back down into the normal range. So what happens with diabetes? Well, there's actually several different types of diabetes. Uh, the, the main type of diabetes uh, for children is called type 1 diabetes. Type 1 diabetes occurs in about one out of every 350 children, uh, uh, less than the age of 18. And it can also develop in, in younger adults or even middle-aged adults. In type 1 diabetes, what happens is the body's immune system gets confused. The antibodies that are supposed to attack viruses and bacteria instead start to attack the cells in the pancreas that normally make insulin. Therefore, somebody who has type 1 diabetes cannot make insulin. So what happens when somebody with diabetes eats food? Let's take somebody who has diabetes but has not yet been diagnosed and therefore has not started treatment. When they take in food, again, their blood glucose level will go up but they don't have insulin around to help move that blood glucose into the cells. So their blood glucose level stays very high. Second thing that happens is that cells don't get energy that they need and therefore cells don't work very well. And that would be why people who are diagnosed with diabetes might be very tired and lose weight and have poor energy. With the high blood glucose levels in diabetes, the kidney's job has to try to the kidney has to try to filter that blood. And because there's so much sugar in there, it actually is hard for the kidneys to keep up. And it causes people to have lots of urination. When people uh, have lots of urination, they respond by drinking a lot. The last thing that can happen with diabetes when it's first diagnosed is that the body, again, is starved. It doesn't have the energy that it needs. And so, since it cannot use the glucose that's in the blood, it starts to break down fat. And it makes these things called ketones. And it can use ketones for energy, but in the process of breaking down fat to ketones, it can develop acid in the body. And when acid builds up in the body, it can cause uh, kids and adults to feel very sick and to have vomiting. And so in summary, when someone has diabetes but has not yet been diagnosed, they might initially complain of weight loss and fatigue, increased thirst, increased urination, and vomiting, and really just not feeling very well. The way that we treat somebody who has type 1 diabetes is to give their body back the insulin that it cannot make. And that will be reviewed in greater detail uh, later in the session. Type 2 diabetes is a very different type of diabetes. Type 2 diabetes is typically seen in adults, although it can be seen in adolescents, and it is uh, also associated with uh, obesity and can be seen, uh, it can kind of run in families. What happens in type 2 diabetes is that the body can actually make plenty of insulin, but the problem is that the body is insulin resistant. 
What insulin resistance means is that it takes more insulin to do the uh, job of insulin. So again, imagine the analogy of the insulin opening the door to the cell. For type 2 diabetes, it's very, very difficult for insulin to open that door to the cell. And in fact, it takes large, large, large amounts of insulin to finally open that door. And so it's very difficult for people who have type 2 diabetes to, again, process the energy that's available in their bloodstream. And it can lead to some of the same uh, uh, signs that we discussed earlier for type 1 diabetes. The treatment for type 2 diabetes is a little bit different. Oftentimes it involves controlling the diet a little bit more strictly, uh, can involve some medications by mouth, and then can also involve insulin. So again, to review, type 1 diabetes is when the body is unable to make any insulin at all, and therefore somebody with type 1 diabetes is dependent on insulin for the treatment of their diabetes. Type 2 diabetes is related to insulin resistance, meaning that they make insulin, but their body has a hard time processing and handling the insulin. And someone with type 2 diabetes is oftentimes treated in a different way with diet, medications, and sometimes insulin. Living with diabetes is a balancing act of food, activity, and insulin, and or oral medications. These three factors and how they affect blood sugar can change from day to day. Healthy eating is good for everyone, not just for people living with diabetes. Healthy eating includes balanced meals from a variety of all food groups, moderate serving sizes, and limited amounts of fats and sweets. Food is made up of three basic categories, carbohydrates or carbs, proteins, and fats. For people with diabetes, the carbohydrate category will affect blood sugar the most. Therefore, the person with diabetes will pay special attention to the amount of carbohydrates consumed at meals and snacks. The body breaks down carbohydrates from the food we eat and turns it into glucose or sugar for the body to use. Glucose can be used immediately for energy or stored in the liver and muscle for future use. Carbohydrates are present in common foods such as fruit, milk, bread, rice, pasta, and sweets. Foods with carbohydrates are healthy food choices for everyone, including people with diabetes, because carbohydrates provide energy and nutrients necessary for life. A common method for meal planning is counting carbohydrates or carbs. This calculation is done in either grams or carb choices. When counting carbs, one serving size equals 15 grams of carbohydrate or one carb choice. Here are some examples of 15 grams of carbohydrate or one carb choice. A small piece of fruit, one cup of milk, one third cup of rice or pasta, and one half cup fruit juice. The food label is a useful tool to assist in knowing how many carbohydrates are in other foods. The food label or nutrition facts label provides the total carbohydrates for each serving size. Most people with type 1 diabetes will eat between 45 to 75 grams of carbohydrates or three to five carb choices at each meal. This amount varies according to the person's size and whether he or she is working at weight loss or weight gain. The amount of carbohydrates recommended for children and adolescents varies by age, activity, and growth needs. Most people with diabetes know how many total carb choices or grams of carbohydrates they can eat at meals or snacks. The next basic food category is protein. Protein is found in meat, fish, eggs, peanut butter, and nuts. Protein is needed for growth and repair of body tissue. Protein does affect blood sugar, but not quickly. The final basic food category is fat. A well-balanced diet includes a limited amount of fat. Healthy fat is found in most fish, olive oil, and canola oil. It is also found in nuts such as almonds, peanuts, pistachios, pecans, and walnuts. Unhealthy fat is found in foods such as donuts, candy bars, french fries, and potato chips. These food choices are not healthy choices for anyone to eat on a regular basis. Fat has little or no effect on blood sugar. Greg, do you think Will should be out there playing? He has diabetes. Oh, that's perfectly okay. As long as he's got his medication, and his test equipment with him should be perfectly safe out there playing. But thanks for asking. Everyone can benefit from regular physical activity. 
For people with diabetes, physical activity will help lower blood sugar. Other benefits of regular physical activity are reduced insulin or oral medication needs, improved heart health, and healthy weight management. People with type 1 diabetes may adjust food and insulin for different amounts and types of physical activity. To determine how much food and insulin may be needed during an activity, people with diabetes will check their blood sugar level. Checking blood sugar will be discussed later in this program. At the end of this video, we will share instructions on how to access resources available on this DVD, including specific activity and food tips. Insulin and medications are important in diabetes management to lower blood sugars. People with type 1 diabetes do not make any insulin, so these individuals must inject insulin to live. Insulin is a hormone that is secreted from the pancreas, an organ located behind the stomach. Insulin helps move glucose into the cells for energy. Insulin doses vary from person to person. Some people may need a small amount of insulin, while others may need a large amount of insulin. Insulin cannot be taken in a pill form. It must be injected. Insulin can be given by using a syringe and vial, an insulin pen, or an insulin pump. An insulin pump is a mini computer about the size of a cell phone. It gives a constant flow of insulin under the skin throughout the day. In addition, the pump can be programmed to give just the right amount of insulin for meals, snacks, and activities. There are several types or kinds of insulin, ranging from rapid acting to long acting. Most people with type 1 diabetes take a combination of rapid acting and long acting insulin by giving multiple injections or doses a day. Multiple injections may provide better diabetes control by mimicking the body's normal insulin production. Type 2 diabetes is different than type 1 diabetes. People with type 2 usually take oral medications to control blood sugar. Diabetes pills are not insulin, but help the body make more insulin or help the insulin in the body work better. In many cases, insulin is also needed for the treatment of type 2 diabetes. Most people with diabetes check their blood sugar regularly with a meter or home glucose monitor. Checking blood sugars is sometimes called testing or monitoring and is a vital step in managing diabetes. It gives the person with diabetes important information to help make decisions about food, activity, and insulin. To check blood sugar, it is important that the person has clean hands before testing for accurate results. Next, the person will insert a special test strip into a meter and apply a small drop of blood to the test strip. After a few seconds, the meter will display the blood sugar reading. Most people check blood sugar at different times during the day. Testing times may be first thing in the morning, before and after meals, before and after activity, at bedtime, and any time the person feels high or low. What's wrong? What's wrong? I'm low. Oh, come on, let's go check your blood sugar. No, I'm good. Go. No, go if, you're, if you're low, we need to go check your blood sugar. Come on. The usual range for blood sugar for people with diabetes is between 70 and 130 milligrams per deciliter before meals and less than 180 milligrams per deciliter after meals. Blood sugar goals are individualized for each person. However, action is necessary whenever the blood sugar drops below 70 or rises above 240. The next two sections will cover low and high blood sugars and the appropriate treatment. The young man in the scenario at the beginning of this program was experiencing a low blood sugar reaction. Remember, a blood sugar reading less than 70 milligrams per deciliter is too low and is called hypoglycemia. When this happens, there is not enough sugar or energy getting into the cells of the body. The person may feel hungry, shaky, weak, or tired and drowsy. The skin might be cool and clammy, and the person may be slow to respond or even have slurred or garbled speech. Sometimes a young person who is acting out may actually be experiencing a low blood sugar reaction. If the person has diabetes, always consider inappropriate behavior as a sign of low blood sugar. They're cheating. 
I think you're getting a little agitated. Let's go test your blood. And make it sure is important to test blood sugar when any of these signs and symptoms are present. A helpful tip to remember signs and symptoms of a low blood sugar is clammy and slow, probably low. That was out. Out. That was out. No, it was out. It was out. It was out. George, what's wrong? Well, let's go check your blood sugar. There are many possible causes for a low blood sugar reading. Some of the most common causes are delayed or skipped meals, too much insulin, the wrong type of insulin, and more than the usual amount of physical activity for that person. Remember, each person with type 1 diabetes is unique. A vigorous game of volleyball for one person might bring the blood sugar down only slightly while that same amount of activity for another person may cause a very low blood sugar that requires action. Low blood sugar should be treated immediately with 15 grams of fast-acting carbohydrate. A fast-acting carbohydrate is easily broken down into sugar and quickly absorbed into the bloodstream. Therefore, it is readily available to the cells for energy. The recommended treatment for a low blood sugar is fast-acting carbohydrate in the form of three or four glucose tablets or a tube of glucose gel. These handy options are available without a prescription and can be easily carried in a pocket, backpack, or emergency kit. Some food choices are also fast-acting carbohydrates. Common examples are four ounces or half cup of fruit juice, a small juice box, half can of regular soda, or one tablespoon of sugar or honey. A candy bar should not be used in the treatment of low blood sugar because it contains fat, which slows the absorption of sugar. An easy way to remember how to treat a low blood sugar is to follow the 15-15 rule. If a person is experiencing signs of a low blood sugar, or if his or her blood sugar is under 70, treat with 15 grams of fast-acting carbohydrate. It takes about 15 minutes for the sugar to get into the bloodstream and then into the cells. Encourage the person with diabetes to rest and wait the entire 15 minutes and then recheck the blood sugar. If the blood sugar is still under 70, treat again with another 15 grams of fast-acting carbohydrate. Remember, treat low blood sugar with 15 grams of fast-acting carbohydrate and recheck in 15 minutes. After treating low blood sugar, consider providing a snack if continued activity is expected. If a low blood sugar is not recognized and treated, a person's blood sugar may continue to drop, eventually causing seizures or unconsciousness. A medication called glucagon can be injected to treat very low blood sugar when a person with diabetes is unable to swallow, is unconscious, or is having a seizure. Anyone can give an injection of glucagon. Examples include a family member, friend, caregiver, or health care provider. Training for giving glucagon is preferred, but if you are not trained, follow the directions in the glucagon kit. A glucagon kit should be included in every diabetes emergency pack. High blood sugar or hyperglycemia is defined as a blood sugar above 240 milligrams per deciliter. When this happens, the body does not have enough insulin. The person may experience extreme thirst with dry mouth, 